Hey guys, and welcome to Subwoofer 101. Uh, quite a mess here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you what I've done here and what's been happening, and uh, it's been pretty exciting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I started off with that beast there. That is a uh, Shoe VTF-15H. It's a 15-inch subwoofer. It is highly regarded as a juggernaut. It's an impressive subwoofer. And I wondered which is better to go with, a larger subwoofer or two smaller subs? And I actually got a hold of SVS and I asked them, you know, I told them my idea and they apparently liked it. And what they did is they sent out two PB1000s and that's this one here and the one that's back there, okay? I, I've had this set up where the VTF 15 is um, for quite a while now. I've been enjoying it. Um, and all these other subs, um, you know, that's that's a Velodyne uh, CT100 there. And these are some subs I don't feel are worth mentioning. Um, I have a, a policy on my website. I don't like to bash brands. Um, I'll discuss certain brands that I think, you know, I should. Um, but I don't like to beat up on brands. And the reason I'll mention Velodyne by name is I know they make subs that do a lot better than the CT100. Um, that just happens to be, uh, honestly, I, I've had a lot of stuff thrown my way, if you can't tell. Um, and part of it is these towers and uh, that Velodyne sub that was just loaned to me by a friend so I could uh, give my impressions of it. So anyway, um, so anyway, the SVS uh, has been really cool, uh, very supportive of the site and what I'm doing, um, you know, for obvious reasons. They're, they're a big part of the subwoofers that I recommend because, man, they do really well at it. Um, but anyway, they sent out these two PB1000s, and the reason I had them send those is because they're about the same price as the large sub. And so the question I want to answer is if you've got a $1,000 budget for base, do you get a large single sub or do you get two smaller subs? Okay, it's, it's an important question. It's about the same money. Um, and what I found is dual subs are everything they're cracked up to be. Um, I mean, that's that, that, you know, the 15 inch sub is a monster. It sounds really good. Um, goes really deep. Uh, the, the PB 1000s do not go as deep. Of course. I mean, you know, it's doesn't have quite the, the, you know, uh, speaker area that the larger 15 does, but that's where I kind of got lost. Um, I really questioned <laughs> my own thinking and my own hearing. Um, the, their wizardry on getting these little tens to do what they do is uh, hats off. I mean, it is really impressive. Uh, I found them to be authoritative down to 21 hertz, and you could and still with good input, good output down to 12. Or I'm sorry, 19 hertz. Okay, which is exactly what they advertise. It's exactly what the graph looks like. Um, every subwoofer is going to have a taper at some point, um, and it was it was as advertised. Um, and to give you an example, um, you know, the, the CT100 there, the Velodyne, again, Velodyne, uh, they do make some good subwoofers, um, but that one, it, it fell off, um, you know, around 30 hertz. It didn't, it, it lost its authority. It wasn't, you know, you didn't feel, it wasn't there. Uh, whereas with the, you know, PB1000s, it was there. And with the VTF15, it's absolutely there. Um, is there down to, you know, uh, 17, 18 hertz, it, it, you know, it starts to taper around there. Uh, it's been a while. You know, your, your base memory kind of fades a little bit, but I did plug it back in, as you can see, and I, I played it a little bit uh, before I made this to make sure that I wasn't uh, fooling myself. Um, but what I found was dual subs are, are, I mean, it's a must. If you're going to go so far as to get something that's quality, and you want good frequency response, you want, you know, music to sound good, you want movies to sound good. Um, dual subs, not right next to each other, because that kind of cancels the effect, but you want them separated. Either side of the TV is good, and there's a thousand other configurations you can do. Um, but at a minimum, dual subs is important. So if you're going to get into this, um, there's a couple options. You can buy a larger sub uh, like that, and then upgrade or, or, or buy another one just like it. Um, that's another topic that I've, I've come across is, well, can you do a 10 inch and a 15 inch together? Um, 
you can do it. Uh, but I find, you know, I, I tried all kinds of scenarios with, with all these subs here. And what I find is that you want the subs matched as evenly as possible. Now, if you got, you know, say a PB2000 and an NSD12 together, you're going to be in pretty good shape. They're real similar. They're made by the same company. One's just an upgraded model. So if you've got an NSD12 and you're wanting to upgrade, you know, PB2000 will work out great. Um, so, you know, you don't, you don't really want to mix and match too much because, you know, your, your room EQ, if, which you should have one, it's, it's important if you're going this far, uh, like Odyssey or even better, some base management. Um, you want that, you know, it's going to adjust for the sub's characteristics. And for certain, the characteristics of the larger 15-inch sub are a lot different than the smaller 10-inch sub. And so if you're trying to have it correct all these things, you know, it's going to get a little confused. Um, so that's one thing I'd say. So, you know, in the big sub versus two small subs, um, the one certain area where I could see it being good to go one big sub is if you're planning to buy one uh, shortly thereafter of the same, you know, same type of sub. Um, but, I mean, guys, I can't tell you. Uh, I had a real dead spot in my chair here. And it was, I mean, it was bad, you know. And, and, and... <laughs> That, you know, the VTF-15 is, is it, I, I don't mean to cast any shade on that sub. Um, really, the only thing that sub, uh, well, the only two things that sub didn't do uh, was, you know, osmosis. <laughs> it wasn't able to just duplicate itself. Um, that'd be pretty impressive feat. Um, and it's kind of big, you know what I mean? And I'm not, that's not a knock. That's just a fact. I mean, you can see the creeper there. <laughs> I started to do this, you know, started to get set up for this video and realized I was by myself and didn't have a way to move it. So uh, I kind of hurt myself a little bit there, but I uh, got it on the creeper and got it out here. Uh, had it back in storage while I was listening to the, to the uh, PB1000s. Um, but really that sub is, I mean, it's quality. Don't, you know, I'm not knocking it, you know. Um, I will say that that sub is really good for more advanced users. Um, because it's got different EQs, it's got different port uh, modes, and, and all kinds of things. Um, and not that that's a bad thing. Um, you know, it's just, it's, 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 you know, apples to oranges kind of thing. Um, uh, the, the PB1000s were just plug and play. I just plugged them in, set the gain, and went from there. Um, so anyway, you know, again, I, no, no shade meant to be cast on the VTF-15. Um, as far as the PB1000s, they, I mean, like I said, I had to ask other people, <laughs> okay? How does this sound to you? And everyone, wow, it sounds really good. Um, and, and it's just a matter of being duels. Um, you know, it really evens it out. I mean, you wouldn't want a surround sound set up with one speaker, you know, you know, just one left channel. Um, it, it's, it's similar to that, to, similar to the stereo experience. Um, you know, more is better. Uh, if you want to do a four subwoofers, that's that's cool, man. Uh, you can do it, and it'll sound better. It'll be a little more complicated to set up, but um, you know they did some research on it. Uh, gosh, I should know this. I do this all the time. I think it's Harmon that came out with the subwoofer white papers. Really complicated stuff. And what I boiled it all down to is two is ideal to start with. Four is great. Fifty is wonderful. Um, you know, who has the money for 50 subs? <laughs> uh, you know, these are all borrowed, uh, aside from uh, the big sub and that tiny little 8-inch there. Um, so, really, uh, you know, the dual sub setup is, is great. You want to start off with that, and then, you know, if you want to add a third or a fourth sub, cool. But, really, a single sub, I mean, like I said, this dead spot I had evaporated when I got the dual set up. And, um, you know, with a single sub, placement was really important. I had to, you know, just move it an inch over this way, an inch over that way, just to get the right sound. And, and it was, uh, it was a pain. Um, when I, you know, when I set up the duals, I, I had one, you know, moved a little bit that way on the other side of the main driver. And, you know, it, and then I moved it back over so it just looked more symmetrical. I didn't notice that much of a difference. Uh, whereas if I move just the single sub over, uh, you notice a difference. You know, you can create a dead spot or, or a peak 
depending on how far you move it to the left or right or out or in, you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot more complicated, believe it or not, to try and set up a single. Um, so, you know, those are my thoughts on that. Duels are absolutely important. Um, and, you know, and I got to thank SVS. I mean, you know, I, I sent them this idea, you know, and just like, I think it'd be great to listen to. And they're like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I appreciate their support. Um, they seem to like what I'm doing on the website and the channel. And uh, I, I'm very appreciative. And, you know, you guys, if you like this content, you have SVS to thank because they were the ones willing to pay for the shipping to send out the subs and, you know, trust that I wouldn't take them and say, hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> you know, uh, they've been very cool and um, just a pleasure to work with. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of guys say, well, you know, can I get something cheaper? And I've really been looking and, uh, you know, I've looked at a couple subs and, and a couple were close, but they just didn't have the earmarks of a good sub and, and you know some of that is is power some of that is equalization um you know some of it's just like I, I saw one sub i was kind of interested in and i thought hey maybe but they had dumb little problems like the the you know the auto on wasn't sensitive enough and it would shut off in the middle of your whatever you're watching stuff like that um so the pb 1000s truly are you know they're this they're the starting point for the kind of performance i'm talking about Anything better would be good. Um, and better does not necessarily mean just more expensive. You can spend, I mean, I have seen some stuff. I don't really want to point it out because I'm not trying to, again, I don't bash any brands. But I've seen some subs that exceed $5,000 a piece and they still don't go under 30 hertz. And that's rated by the factory. The factory says, hey, under 30, you're not going to get anything out of us. You know, when, when, a, when a manufacturer rates it real low, I kind of question that, but when they rate it high, when they say, oh, we, our subs give up at 40, I believe them, you know, because they want to rate those as low as possible because that's better for sales. So, um, I mean, really, you, you can you can spend a lot more and get a lot less. And so, but I, I am keeping an eye out for less expensive subs. I'm just having a hard time finding it, um, which makes these PB1000s, I, I mean, probably the smartest buy in base. I mean, and... And that's not just because of the performance and, and the price point. That, that's important, too. Um, but the other thing that's really cool about SVS is that if you get those and then eight months later, you're like, ah, I really want the PB2000s or I want the PB13 Ultra, you know, they're top of the line. You can do it. Um, you can trade them in within a year for full value. OK, so you spend, a, you know, 950 on these dual subs and eight months later, you want to trade them in. You get the full value. You get that full 950 credited uh, towards whatever you want to buy that's better. And the only thing they ask is that in that scenario, you pay for shipping. SVS, you never pay for shipping. Um, at least that's the way they're set up now. I hope they stay that way. Um, but that's the only time that I'm aware of that they ask you to pay for shipping. And so, you know, to give you full value, you know, I mean, for me, you know, to go and trade in a sub or sell it or something like that, you're going to lose some value there just just in the process of selling something. So that makes them an extremely smart buy. Uh, SVS's customer service is legendary. Uh, so is their performance. Um, I was really concerned when I got these. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of fun, but I'm going to have to send them back. And, you know, I have kind of some strict limits for the Sub 401 site. And that's, you know, it's got to be authoritative down to 20 hertz. And these are sort of down to 21 hertz, and they still had output below that. Uh, so I don't, you know, one one hertz, I'm not going to, you know, cry about. Um, but I really didn't expect that. I expected them to, you know, be good to about, down to about 26 or so. I've seen, I've, I've owned other subs that were rated to go even lower, rated to 16 hertz, and they gave up at 30. So I did not have super high expectations. And they delivered. And so I, it really uh, has been an impressive experience as far as that goes. To have something that inexpensive uh, do that well. And, you know, of course, there were a few songs where, you know, the 15 did better. Um, you know, there's a pipe organ thing. You can go to my playlists and, and see uh, uh, some of the pipe organ stuff. And, and the larger sub will go a bit deeper. Um, but it's not like, you know, 10 hertz deeper. Um, you know, it's it's not... A massive difference it's a difference but not massive and I'm kind of glad I have that that point to pick with SVS because 
it's I mean they make it hard to find a problem with what they do they're just really impressive um, so anyway that's kind of where I'm at with these you know with uh, you know the PB 1000s are the starting point that's when the things get fun that's when everything starts to sound good when you don't have good bass uh, everything sounds kind of anemic okay um, these are paradigm towers they sound really good you unplug the subwoofer and just run them full range they sound anemic and that's not the fault of the of the towers uh paradigm didn't make a bad tower it's just to make the base you really need something with a big box um and you need something that's you know substantial in order to do it right so uh anyway so those are my thoughts so far uh you know always you know i encourage you to buy or, or to get as much depth as you can um, if you can get a sub that goes to 17 hertz instead of 19 hertz, do it. Um, you know, the PB 2000s, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of. Um, I'm, you know, they go deeper, they're bigger, they're more substantial. A big sub sounds beautiful, by the way. Um, you know, and, but <laughs> again, these little tens, they didn't sound like tens. Uh, they sounded more like 12s. They acted more like 12s that are made by a really good company. So, um, Anyway, I, I, you know, I just want to make those points and, um, you know, these subs, <laughs> again, very impressive, very happy with them. Uh, you know, I, I can't, I tried real hard to find content where these didn't do well and man, they did well. Uh, you know, again, I didn't expect as much. Um, you know, I expected to be, you know, kind of, oh, well, it's a good sub, but I think we need something better. Um, they're a great starting point. You know, again, anything better, uh, for sure, definitely is, is worth looking at. But really, in terms of, of just a smart buy, and, you know, if you're if you're in a point where you really want dual subs and you'd really like the PB2000s, but you, you just can't scrape it together, um, you know, you can start with the PB1000s, and like I said, you know, within a year, upgrade to the PB2000s, if you need to. Uh, you know, one point I can say about these subs, if I wasn't doing this channel, and these were all I could ever afford, and these were the subs I was going to listen to for the rest of my life, I would not be upset. Uh, and, and I say that with sincerity. I mean, I have enjoyed these things. I could have, you know, packed them up and shipped them back to SVS within a week. I didn't do that. I held on to them for a while. Uh, and just enjoy them. I mean, they've been that good. So uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. I know it's a long video, um, but there was a lot packed into that. And um, and it's kind of a complicated subject. And I know, you know, this is probably gonna, and a lot of people are gonna, oh, I, don't, I don't agree. Uh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Uh, this is just my input. Um, this is just my opinion uh, from what I've been hearing. And, uh, you know, you know, obviously, is is that big sub and that little sub, are they compar comparable? Um, in terms of, you know, actually doing the sub 30 stuff, yeah, they're both comparable. They both do, do really well. Um, and they're both quality, you know what I mean? Both of them. Um, obviously, you get more with the bigger sub, but if you have to get, you know, it, it, I would say take your subwoofer budget, split it in half, and get duels. Um, at least that's what I'll do in the future anytime because uh, for me it was a curiosity prior to uh, hearing these two set up and, and I've had uh, lesser subs set up before and um, you know non-matching and I, I didn't <laughs> the, the benefit wasn't there um, having dual subs having quality subs to begin with that's where the magic happens that's where the good stuff happens so uh anyway guys again sorry to ramble on but this was a big one so uh, i appreciate it uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments um you know uh, you have any thoughts ideas of future videos you'd like to see or anything like that uh i'm open i'm i'm, I'm enjoying this i'm having a great time um you know i actually did this video prior uh and I was having a, a, a flare-up. I was having pain. You could really tell in the video, so I just decided to reshoot it. Uh, and then my TV broke, and so I got the new TV. Um, but anyway, so it took me a while to do this. But um, I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I'm excited for some stuff I've got coming down the line. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks.